Welcome, one and all, to the World Poetry Cafe Family Section, the Family Tent. I'm going to do you a family show. My name's Nick Tocek. I hope you like my t-shirt. It says, be who you are on the inside, and these are my insides. There we are. Cool t-shirt. I think you'll agree. Right, so, got the right t-shirt. Got my books with me. I'll show you. I'll show you. Right. I write loads of books. That's one of mine. A dragon poetry book. That's one of mine. Book of poems about creatures. That's one of mine. A mixture of poems. That's one of mine. Football poems. That's one of mine. Poems for younger kids. I write books of poetry. I travel all over the world doing this. I should be just back from Uzbekistan. But it's April 2020, the pandemic is on and I'm not travelling. So I'm here in my office. I think maybe you can just make out over there the corner of my computer. I've got a desk there. We've got this room doubles as the cat's room as well. The cat's asleep over there so I'm not going to disturb him. But I'll start by... Uh, reading you a dragon poem from my book of dragon poems right and uh, before I do that how about a magic trick because I also do magic tricks and I'll be doing you some magic tricks this first one I'm going to show you if you wait till the end of the show I'll show you how to do it okay it's simple you take a book you put it in your hand there we are there's the book. I now let go of the book and I can slide it up and down. How is that done? See, I'm not holding it. Right? You can do it with other things too. Let me show you. And at the end of the show, you'll know how to do this. Pencil. Open your hand. Slide the pencil up and down. How's that? Hey, cool trick. Even better, a ruler. Put the ruler in your hand. Now watch this. Let go of the ruler. And there it goes, sliding up and down. Cool trick. So, you'll know how to do it if you hang on till the end of the show. What I'm going to do now is read you the poem that I promised to read from here. It's the first poem in the book. It's one of my most popular poems. It's called The Dragon Who Ate Our School. In schools in England, you have somebody who helps kids across the road. They hold a stick with a big circle on the top that says, Stop Children Crossing. And they stride out in the middle of the road, stand there, and the children cross because the traffic all stops. Because they've got a stick with a big circle on top, they call them a lollipop man or a lollipop lady. Right? The dragon who ate our school. It also helps to know, it also helps to know that some of the school dinners in England are not that good. Right? I know I've been in hundreds and hundreds, in fact thousands of schools in Britain. And uh, sometimes you get good school dinners, sometimes you don't. Here we go, the dragon who ate our school. The day the dragon came to call, she ate the gate, the playground wall, and slate by slate, the roof and all, the staff room, gym and entrance hall, and every classroom, big or small. So, she's undeniably great. She's absolutely cool. The dragon who ate, the dragon who ate, the dragon who ate our school. Pupils panicked. Teachers ran. She flew at them. With wide wingspan. She slew a few and then began to chew through the lollipop man. Two parked cars and a transit van. Wow. 
She's undeniably great. She's absolutely cool. The dragon who ate, the dragon who ate, the dragon who ate our school. She bit off the head of the head. She said she was sad he was dead. Well, he, he bled and he bled and he bled. And as she fed, her chin went red. Mmm, blood. <laughs> and as she fed, her chin went red, and then she swallowed the cycle shed. <gasps> She's undeniably great. She's absolutely cool. The dragon who ate, the dragon who ate, the dragon who ate our school. It's thanks to her that we've been freed. We needn't write, we needn't read. Me and my friends are all agreed. We're very pleased with her indeed. So clear the way, let her proceed. Cause she's undeniably great. She's absolutely cool. The dragon who ate, the dragon who ate, the dragon who ate our school. There was some stuff she couldn't eat. A monster forced her face defeat. She spat it out like that. I only mind that. I didn't really spit, you know. <laughs> there was some stuff she couldn't eat. A monster forced her face defeat. She spat it out along the street. It was the dinner lady's veg and meat. And that pink stuff we get for sweet. But she's undeniably great. She's absolutely cool. The dragon who ate, the dragon who ate, the dragon who ate our school. There you are. First poem. Okay. <clears throat> I'll do a second poem and then I'll do your magic trick. How does that sound? This second one is a poem about a dog. It's called Beware of the Dog. Bang on the door, bang on the door, bang on the door of 64. But don't ignore their Labrador, who'll give your leg a nasty gnaw and leave it bleeding red and raw and terribly, terribly, terribly sore. And that's because a Labrador is naturally a carnivore. So bang on the door, bang on the door, Bang on the door of 64, so long as you're sure you know the score and not before, no, not before, you're well aware of what's in store. Look at the jaw, look at the paw, size of the tooth, size of the claw, and that's because a Labrador is naturally a carnivore. So, bang on the door, bang on the door, bang on the door of 64. If you dare. There you are. What did I say I'd do for you next? I did mention something about a magic trick, didn't I? Let's start with a rubbish one. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Watch. What colour is it? You're probably saying black and white. Well, you're wrong. It's, in fact, fully coloured. Or no, is it? Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. But that's all it does. Bit rubbish. <laughs> ah, I can do a better one in a sec. I'll do another poem. And then... <clears throat> let's see. This one. This book. Right? I told you I went abroad quite a bit. I do. I work in schools all over the world. I was uh, travelling to a school, I can't even remember where, but I was stuck at an airport and it was late at night and the plane had been delayed. I wanted something to read. I didn't have anything with me to read. And the shops had all shut because it wasn't a 24-hour airport. They'd closed the shops. And I was sitting there thinking, ah, I want something to read. And then suddenly I thought, just a minute. You're a writer, Nick. Why don't you write something for you to read? So I did. I wrote the poem that I'm about to read you. It's called Poem to Read While You Wait. 
And it worked because I wrote it, took me a while, I read it through once and they announced over the tannoy that my plane was ready and I was to go to the gate to prepare to board. So, a poem that actually worked for me. Here it is. Wait at the bus stop, wait in the rain. Wait on the journey to wait for the train. Wait while it takes you to wait for your plane. Wait at the flight gate, wait there in vain. Wait and wait and wait and wait again. Wait at the help desk, wait to complain. Wait while the staff there wait to explain. Wait with your passport, wait but remain. Wait till the waiting drives you insane. Wait and wait and wait and wait again. Wait on the tarmac, wait on the plane. Wait while the plane's weight takes the flight lane. Wait for a cloud break. Wait to see terrain. Wait while you circle. Wait to land again. Wait. And wait. And wait. And wait again. Wait in the gangway, wait to leave the plane. Wait for your suitcase, waiting is a pain. Wait with a headache, wait while your brain waits to see if waiting triggers your migraine. Wait and wait and wait and wait again. <sighs> How about another magic trick? I have one here. Right, what we've got is a piece of rope. Okay. I've got a piece of rope, so I'm cool. You've got no rope, so you're ropeless. <laughs> you're ropeless. <sighs> right, how many hands? Count them. One, two. Or if you count the other way, one, two. Either way is two, right? So, a piece of rope has two ends. Sometimes you come across a piece of rope that's got three ends. It happens. Sometimes you come across a piece of rope with four ends. It happens. If you've got a piece of rope with four ends, one, two, three, four, four ends, right? That's because what you've actually got is not one piece of rope, but very clearly two completely separate pieces of rope, right? Two pieces of rope. Although this can't be two pieces of rope because when I started it was only this one piece of rope. And that is a pretty neat magic trick, isn't it? <sighs> a football poem now, right? This is about a family that all like football. There's a story behind it, I'll tell you the story. It's true, this is actually how it came about. There was a documentary on television about a family that all liked football. Right? And I was watching it. They'd got two dogs, and the dogs had football, had collars that looked like football scarves, and they were wearing little tops, both dogs, that were football tops. And the family all had football tops on. And they were all sat together in the room watching football on telly, and they'd got football posters all around the walls. And I was watching it, and I started thinking about it, and I thought, so the dad is football mad, because it rhymes. And then I thought, and the gran 
is a football fan because it rhymes. And the dogs are wearing football togs. Togs is English slang for outfits that you wear. Football togs, especially for sport, your togs are your clothes for sport, right? Football togs. The dogs were wearing football togs because it rhymes. And the lad was football mad, like his dad, because it rhymes. And the gran was a football fan, because it rhymes. And the daughter is a football supporter, because it rhymes. And the mum watches football on telly, sat on a big fat sofa. That one doesn't rhyme. That's not the poem. This is the poem. The Football Family Man. I'm the finest fan that football's had. Have a football gran with a football fad. Have a football mother and a football dad. And my football brother has football bad. With my football wife in our football pad. To our football life we football add. Two football daughters and a football lad. All football supporters, all football mad. We football dogs, they're football clad in football togs like a football ad for our football ways. We're football glad without football days, we'd be football sad. I'm a football man who's football mad. I'm the finest fan that football's had. I'm the football family man. Ha! Another poem. <sighs> Here's another magic trick. I've got here a card in a container. You're probably thinking it's very similar to the last trick. No, it's not. No, it's not. Or the last but one trick. No, no, no. It doesn't colour and uncolour itself or anything like that. It's the Queen of Hearts, as you can see. Right. If I start to pull the card out, right, here we go. You can see the Queen of Hearts coming out, right? If I grab the Queen of Hearts, turn this round, slide her back in again. There we are, you can see her sliding back in, right? Here we go. There she is, slid right back in. If I now take her out, come on, your majesty. Here we go. As you can see, there is nothing in there now. It's an empty container. And the Queen of Hearts is now an Ace of Clubs. How does that work? Hey? <sighs> How about a poem from this book? All right, this is called Number Number Cut a Cucumber. And uh, I'll read the first poem from this. It's for little kids, right? But it's fun. It's, doesn't matter how old you are, it's a fun poem. I'd get you to join in. You can do if you want. I don't know whether you're joining in. I can't hear you, but you could join in. The chorus goes, I'm telling, I'm telling, I'm telling mum. Easy, right? Try it. I'm telling, I'm telling, I'm telling mum. Got it, right? I'm sure you have. It's not difficult. Tell tale. I'll hold my finger up when you join in. My sister's being silly and my brother's acting dumb. I'm telling, I'm telling, I'm telling mum. And the biscuit tin is empty. There's not a single crumb. I'm telling, I'm telling, I'm telling mum. My sister took my tricycle. My brother's got my drum. I'm telling, I'm telling, I'm telling mum. And both of them are eating sweets, so they should give me some. I'm telling, I'm telling, I'm telling mum. My sister's got me in a mood, my brother makes me glum. I'm telling, I'm telling, I'm telling mum. They always get the things they want, now they've got chewing gum. I'm 
telling, I'm telling, I'm telling mum. My sister slammed the door on me. She nearly trapped my thumb. I'm telling, I'm telling, I'm telling mum. My brother's taken off his shoes and his socks really hum. Poo, I'm telling, I'm telling, I'm telling mum. My sister's eating apples now. My brother's got a plum. I'm telling, I'm telling, I'm telling mum. Cos they won't give me any fruit and I've an empty tum. I'm telling, I'm telling, I'm telling mum. There you are. Easy. Got some more magic for you in a bit, in a bit. This isn't magic, but I am making a tiny bit of water vanish. See, there's less in there now. <clears throat> what shall I do? Oh yeah, another dragon poem. Here we are, another dragon poem. Right, the book's called Dragons Are Back because it's the best of all my dragon poems. I've had several books of dragon poems out. They were published by Macmillan. This one's published by my current publishers who are called Caboodle. And uh, the one I'm going to read you is Dragon on a Bus. It may be, I read you, Dragon Away at Our School. It may be that you're not going to school because of the pandemic. It may be that you haven't been on a bus for a while because of the pandemic. I was sitting on a bus and I'd got another dragon poem to write and I was thinking about it and I just thought, what if a dragon got on this bus? There are two words in here that you might not know, right? English slang. A wuss is somebody who's scared of everything. A wuss. And something that cuts things up alive is a vivisector. And if a dragon caught you, not me, not grown-ups, not your parents, because we're old with stringy flesh and we wouldn't taste very nice. But if a dragon got you, it would cut you up with its teeth and with its claws. And it would do that because you are young and tender and you would be delicious. Dragon on a bus. Remember, wuss and bibby sector, they come. You can join in this if you want as well. There is a chorus that just goes, there's a dragon on the bus, there's a dragon on the bus, there's a dragon on the bus. If you can't remember all of that, just say the first line three times, okay? Hmm. Now you know I'm not a wuss. I don't like to make a fuss. But there's just a little matter that I think we should discuss. There's a dragon on the bus, there's a dragon on the bus, there's a dragon on the bus and it's looking at us. Let me speak to an inspector or the company director because I don't quite recollect a sign to say we should expect a scaly people vivisector on this bus. Now I never swear and cuss but it's Flipping obvious that we've got a situation here that could be hazardous. There's a dragon on the bus. There's a dragon on the bus. There's a dragon on the bus and it's coming after us. I think we should call a meeting because its fiery breath is heating. All our clothing and our seating. I don't like the way it's treating all the people that it's eating on this bus. It's chewing us and burning us. And this is what's concerning us. It could become a problem by the time we reach the terminus. There's a dragon on the bus, there's a dragon on the bus, there's a dragon on the bus and it's eating and it's eating and it's eating all of us. <sighs> right, I did promise you another magic trick, didn't I? And I do have one here. 
watch carefully. I've got two balls. A black ball. A yellow ball. If I get these two balls and I slam them hard together, something amazing happens. Could be that I just crush my head, but I move my head back, slam the two of them together and watch carefully what happens. Abra! Kadabra! <laughs> Good one, huh? <sighs> How are we doing for time? 25 minutes. Right. We've got half our show, so let's quickly do another poem. Where are we? Here we are. This one is oh, about the teacher reading the register. But she's reading the register at a time when, for a whole variety of reasons, all the pupils are absent, but teachers read registers, so she's sitting in an empty room reading the register. You could do a poem like this. I'll tell you how after I've read it, okay? A writing idea for you. Nobody here. All the kids in this class have English names beginning with J. You could do it using names beginning with any letters. A whole mixture of letters, it doesn't matter. I'll explain in a minute. Here's the poem. Where's Jed still in bed? Where's John come and gone? Where's Jean not been seen? Where's Jan in Japan? Where's Joan on the phone? Where's Jack won't be back? Where's Jake on his break? Where's Jill absent still? Where's Jude fetching food? Where's Joy out with Roy? Where's Jim cops took him? Where's Jay went away? Where's James playing games? Where's Jess changed the dress? Where's Jock died of shock? Where's Jane can't explain? Where's Jules broke the rules? Where's Joel fighting Noel? Where's Jade been delayed? Where's June? Honeymoon? Wow. Where's Jen gone again? Where's Judd covered in mud? Where's Jen Bethlehem? Where's Josh somewhere posh? Where's Joe had to go? Where's Jeff OFF? Where's Jazz meeting Baz? Where's Joss with the boss? Where's Jazz sick he says? Where's Jeb on the web? Where are you on the loo? Which is in England is what we call the toilet. It's called a toilet for poetry reasons, you know. That's true. Toilet doesn't rhyme with much, but loo rhymes with poo. <laughs> right, so, how could you do something like this? What you do is you just list loads of names. List the names of all your family, the first names of everybody in your family, and then go on to everybody you can think of on your street, or everybody that you can think of at your school, or everybody that you can think of who you're related to at all, right? Uh, or, or what about uh, all your friends? What about if you've got a bookshelf with books on? What about the first names of all the authors, right? Easy. So you get a long list of names. Or you could just have a go at thinking up all the names for girls that you can think of beginning with A, followed by all the names for boys beginning with A. And then all the names for girls beginning with B, and so on through the other. Right, you get a long, long list of names. Then you shorten them. Right, my name's Nicholas. That only rhymes with ridiculous. But if you shorten it, where's Nick? He's off sick. Where's Nick? Practicing a magic trick. Easy, right? Susan doesn't rhyme easily. Right, but Sue, she could have gone to the zoo. Right, where's Sue? Gone to the zoo. Easy, right? Mohammed doesn't rhyme with much. Shorten it to Mo. Where's Mo? We don't know. Or where's Mo? Had to go. Easy. So you could have a go at doing a poem like that. Couldn't you? Right? So, I've got to stop fairly soon. I'll explain to you the magic trick that I did. Right? I'll show you how to do it with the ruler. Watch. You take the ruler, put it in your hand, slide it 
up and down. Easy. How do you do it? By having a pen or pencil there. So you can simply hold it. You put it like that. There you are, I'm holding it. And now I can slide it up and down. And it's the same with the pencil. There's the pencil, easy. The book, you can do it with almost anything. Okay, I've just about finished. My name's Nick Totchek. I hope you've enjoyed this show. Here we go. I wanna hear you clap. Right? That's not loud enough, I can't hear you. Clap louder so I can hear you. There we are. I think I can hear that in the distance now. Okay. Finished. And that's the end of my show. Thank you for watching it. Bye.